Chapter 23 On my way home that evening, I saw Devin sitting next to the pool. When I raised my arm to wave, he signaled for me to come closer. He was reclining in one of the chairs beside the pool, wearing his army trunks and nothing else. His hair and shorts were wet, as if he'd recently gotten out of the water. As I approached, he stood, slipping his feet into the flip-flops sitting beside his chair. He met me at the fence. Hey, what's up? I asked. I thought you should know, he spoke softly so no one overheard, despite the empty courtyard. I called the Anakitos this afternoon about last night. He needed to know so he can deal with Brandon. I know, I shook my head. I talked to him before work. He didn't say anything, but I'm glad you did. I'm worried this is just the start, something bigger's on its way. Thank you. I'm doing everything I can. I'm avoiding Brandon. Bill is supposed to tell him to stay away. If he contacts me, I'm to let Bill know. I'm glad, Devin said. You're smart and you can take care of yourself, but I know what these guys are capable of. Did you tell Bill about your experiences with this group? No, I didn't see a need to. I think you should. He needs to know all of it. I understand why you didn't telling him then, but now he needs to know. I'll call him back and let him know. Thanks. I laid one hand on top of his, where it gripped the bars separating us. You want to come up for dinner? Sure. Let me go change and make that phone call. I'll be up in a bit. All right. I'm going to change and start dinner. I'll see you later. I went to my apartment. I put together a simple dinner of leftovers for Devin and myself. While we were eating, my PCD rang. I looked at the screen and the readout and picture told me it was Brandon. I turned the screen so Devin could see it. I'm certain Bill's told him to leave me alone by now, I said. You want to talk to him? I'm curious what he has to say. Then answer it, I'll keep my mouth shut. Nodding, I pressed the button to answer the small device. Hello? I asked, putting the device near my ear. What did you say to the Anakitos? Brandon demanded. The truth. Did you tell him I attacked you? No. I didn't say you attacked me. I relayed to him exactly what had happened. No more, no less. I even told him that I broke your nose, I said calmly. Are you in trouble for that? I sighed, seeing where this was going. Not that I'm aware of. You'd know it if you were, Brandon snarled. But somehow you get off scot-free while I'm to be punished. I don't know what you want me to say, Brandon, I said patiently. I looked at Devin to see if he was hearing this. He was watching me, but gave no indication he was hearing what Brandon was saying. I want you to be sorry you got me into trouble. To say you'll go to the Anakitos and tell him you lied so I won't be punished. I'm not going to do that. I didn't lie. I'm not going to say I did. My voice was starting to lose the soft tone. Because of you, I'm to be punished tomorrow. He sounded more than angry, but I didn't know what else to call it. No, not because of me, because of you, Brandon. I didn't make you do anything to get in trouble. I just felt the Anakitos needed to know about what had happened. Why would you go to him, if not to get me into trouble? I had to. Getting you in trouble never entered my mind, keeping me out of it did. What if we were seen? If I didn't tell him the truth, then all he had to go by was whatever rumor he heard. I couldn't do that. Because you couldn't keep your mouth shut, I'm to be punished. After all I've done for you, you can't get me out of this? Brandon, I already told you, I was losing my patience. Any punishment you receive is due to your actions, no one else's. You know how I feel. I've said for years, if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. 
You know how I feel about taking responsibility for your own actions. We've been friends for years. I know you've heard me say this. So it's going to be that way, Brandon said, disdain clear in his voice. Just remember, it's going to cost you. You can still choose my side, then I would make sure things go easier for you. That sounded suspiciously like a threat. I'll keep that in mind. It's not about taking sides, it's about right and wrong, I said. I'm hanging up now. I've nothing more to say. Don't call me again. I have no desire to speak to you. You'll regret this. Mark my words. I heard him ranting on the other end of the line before I could disconnect the call. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath before looking up at Devon. Did you catch all that? I asked. Enough to know he wasn't calling to tell you, have a nice day, he watched me. Not hardly. The question is, what now? I picked up my fork and resumed eating. Seems obvious to me. You don't have to say it. I've got to call Bill. I meant otherwise. Otherwise how? I'm not going to let him intimidate me. But I'm afraid it wasn't an empty threat. How careful am I going to have to be? That's up to you, but I'd rather you avoid him altogether for a while. I'm afraid his group will turn violent. I have no intention of seeing him, but I won't hide. I'd prefer not to get mixed up in whatever he's involved in. I hope it doesn't become violent, but I'm not afraid of it. Devin raised one eyebrow. I'm sure you remember I was more than a bit of a tomboy, I said, waiting for his nod. I'm sure you were gone by then, but I had more than a few fights in high school. Most were because I wouldn't let others tell me what to do, now that I think about it. Anyway, I'm not afraid of a fight, especially after I broke his nose. You had surprise on your side, he cautioned. I know. I have another thing on my side. I don't think he'll hurt me, at least not if he still believes he can convince me to be his, like he said. He could have done a lot of damage yesterday, but he didn't. He tempered it. I won't have that limitation. If he starts a fight, I won't hesitate to give it everything I've got. Good. I'd hate to see you to get hurt. Me too, I said. As soon as we finished eating, I called Bill and told him Brandon called and what had been said. Stay away from him, Nikki, Bill said again. I won't seek him out, but I won't run either. I wouldn't expect you to. Just try to avoid witnesses. I'll try, but I can't make promises. I understand. I should let you know, Devin was here when he called and heard most of it. All right. I doubt he'll call you this time, since he knows I'm calling you now. Is he there now? Bill asked. Yes. Let me speak to him. I went into the living room where Devin was going through the list of movies on my screen, trying to decide what to watch. Bill wants to talk to you, I handed him the device. Hello, Devin said. I went back into the kitchen to clean up.